common with Peg, actually. I also hate children. I just try not to mention when mine are around. <laughs> Super awkward. Do we have any, any, any moms or dads in the audience? <laughs> Woo! Okay, we got one up here. A anyone from this table here? The, okay, you got some moms. She was trying to pay and quickly get out of here. <laughs> So I got a question for the mom. Uh, so do you have boys or girls? What do you got? Girl, one girl. <laughs> so if you were to you know, get sick, or would you give your, your daughter the power of attorney? Yes. Yeah, fair. She, she hesitated, though. <laughs> She's only got one daughter, you guys. I've got, I've got a son and, and a daughter. And the other day I was saying to my son, this is uh, this is what happens when you're a boy mom. I was like, I was telling him that my biggest fear about growing old is becoming too frail to pluck my own facial hairs. And just sitting there in a nursing home, running my fingers over my chin stub all day, and just you know, getting more and more frustrated about it. <laughs> and my son says to me, don't worry, mom. If it comes to that, I'll make sure they restrain your arms. <laughs> So he's, he's fired. <laughs> it's crazy how resistant men are to counseling, right? I know. <laughs> the men in the audience instantly clenched. Now, most men would uh, rather get a colonoscopy, you know, than go to therapy. Like, if their doctor was like, OK, John, we need to figure out what's going on inside of you. Either we insert this six-foot-long camera into your rectum, or you talk about your feelings. Nine out of 10 men would be like, I'll take the butt hose. <laughs> it's not their fault, though. I think the term counseling is too wishy-washy you know, for men. If we want men to take counseling seriously, we need to give it a, a rebrand and like a, an official sports drink. <laughs> OK, what do you think of this? Instead of counseling, we call it High performance, mood, rehab, CrossFit. <laughs> Brought to you by Clitorade. <laughs> Gulp down some pussy so you stop acting like one. <laughs> The female body is very confusing, very complicated when it comes to sex. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of jacking off men. No, that came out wrong. That came out wrong. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of jacking off. Men? It's, it's just so straightforward. You know, you know, always know, it always seems to work, and you know when it works. Meanwhile, you know, my approach to masturbation is more like one of those crystal deodorant stones at Shoppers Drug Mart. You know, I, I like the concept of it, but in practice, I just, I'm never sure if it's working. <laughs> Uh, it is true, though. I have never been able to orgasm from vibrators or sex. And so for most of my, my life, I just thought I couldn't do it. You know, I, I thought I was physically unable to orgasm. And, you know, it sucks not being able to do something that so many people take for granted, you know. You know, and, and the guy at the city hall, he wasn't helpful. He's like, I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs> I cannot issue you a disability parking permit <laughs> based on inability to come. And also, gross. <laughs> OK, here's the crazy thing, though, is I recently realized that I actually can orgasm from masturbation. I've been able to do it this whole time. It's just that my parents saw me masturbating when I was a child and shamed me for it. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I don't want that for my daughter. I think we need to normalize. <laughs> I know those nervous laughs, they know where I'm going with this already. <laughs> the diversity of female self-pleasuring, just like we've normalized the diversity of gender identities, you know? My name is Jackie. My preferred pronouns are she, her. And my preferred method is gyrating belly down <laughs> on a Paddington bear plushie. <laughs> So, so I recently told my husband I want to go to a sex club. I know, I, I, I'm in my 40s, and I, I know it sounds saucy, but there's just certain experiences that I want to have before I die. 
I was having, I guess, FOMO, well, FOMO, actually, fear of missing out on orgies. <laughs> he was kind of weirded out, you know, but he, he agreed to it because he is committed to supporting me on my personal journey towards energetic alignment. And I promised him a blowjob. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize this. There is a, a sex club in New West. It's just downstairs, the House of Comedy. <laughs> No, there is one, it's called uh, Club Eden. So a couple weeks ago, my husband and I were in the Uber on our way to the sex club. And uh, I'm excited until I get out of the Uber and suddenly I'm like, shit, what if someone I know sees me going into this sex club? Like someone from work. I know this might surprise you guys because I just completed an amateur comedy class, but stand-up does not pay my bills. <laughs> I actually have a job. And you know, there could be serious repercussions if people at work thought I was into swinging, you know? The woman in my office get uptight when I borrow their office supplies. <laughs> Can you imagine how uncomfortable they'd be if they thought I might try to borrow their husband's dicks? <laughs> Which is crazy, you guys. I'm not ready to handle anyone else's stapler. I barely know how to operate the one I have at home. <laughs> but uh, you know, so I'm scared. But the Uber's gone, and we're in New West, so it's either the sex club or Old Spaghetti Factory. <laughs> so in we go. Uh, this, the crazy thing about being middle-aged is, you know, first, childbearing tickets toll, and now it's just everything else. So what do all the other ladies wear to the sex club? Skimpy, lacy lingerie. What does this lady wear? So much shapewear, I look like I should have an oxygen tank on my back. <laughs> The sex club is very well organized. There's a main floor with a dessert station and a photo booth. All the naughty stuff happens on these other levels. They get progressively naughtier the higher up you go, right? My goal going to the sex club was, you know, at least to make it to level two. But that was before I realized that all these sex rooms would be filled with so many people just watching. <laughs> Exactly. I, I'm scared of getting heckled at a comedy club. Can you imagine how much worse it would be to get heckled at a sex club? <laughs> the only thing funny about you is the shape of your labia. <laughs> so I'm very uh, ashamed to say I did not make it to level two. Instead, I went back down to the des dessert station, you know, filled my hole with macarons instead. But it wasn't a total loss, because I did make some great lady friends at the sex club who have promised to coach me in the ways of the sex club, so I do it better next time. They even invited me to their Facebook group. It's called The Buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my time, you guys.